Climate change is warming our planet and weather patterns are changing. From wildfires to floods, people are having to deal with weather extremes more frequently. Here in the UK, many of our buildings weren't built with the possibility of future weather extremes in mind. In fact, with 38% of our homes built before 1946 and only 7% post 2000, the UK has the oldest housing stock in Europe. Consequently, many of our homes are now already at risk or will be in the future. So just what exactly should we be preparing for? And how can you make your home climate change ready? The Met Office predicts that in the UK, climate change will lead to warmer and wetter winters, hotter and drier summers, and more frequent and intense weather extremes. The UK's 10 warmest years on record have happened since 2002, and seven of the 10 wettest years in the UK have occurred since 1998. Our homes were not built for the climate that we're going to see over the next few decades. So we're going to have problems like overheating in summer because our homes are built for colder temperatures. We also have problems that our homes are not built being prepared for massive floods either. While this might seem daunting, the good news is that we can make a myriad of changes to our homes as individuals that can effectively protect and mitigate potential damage. For example, fixtures that can get wet and then dry out with minimal damage will increase your home's resilience to flooding. You could make the switch to an inherently resilient material such as hardwood, concrete or steel, or alternatively treat existing fixtures such as wooden doors and frames with a preservative to keep water out. Relocating appliances is also an excellent and relatively simple way to protect your goods against flooding. Moving items like washing machines and dryers to the first floor or on raised plinths can keep them from damage. While more expensive, this tactic can also be replicated for electrical sockets to keep them out of harm's way. Options for walls include using materials such as silicon mineral or magnesium oxide boards, closed cell type insulation and cavity walls or water resistant masonry protection cream. For application to a single dwelling, costs for these range from £750 to £1,500. For floors, switching from carpets, laminate or timber to tiled or concrete flooring boosts resistance. Similar to walls, we can also use silicon mineral or magnesium oxide boards here too. Changes to flooring can be a bit more expensive, with expected application costs for a single dwelling between £1,500 to £5,000. Switching your walls and flooring can reduce insurance claims by up to 80% and significantly reduces repair costs if subsequent floods take place. In fact, flood resilience measures can limit repair costs by up to 73%. The investment could be recovered in just a single subsequent flood. Beyond interior work, gardens and green spaces are a great natural way to reduce flood risk. Gardens and green spaces can play uh, a big role in uh, protecting your home from flooding. If you have a land that is paved in concrete, it has no cracks, when it floods, the water just has nowhere to go. And we are seeing in places like London, there are new regulations coming in where they will not give permission for you to pave over your driveway or your front garden because it increases the flood risk. There are also other benefits to having a lawn rather than a driveway. Green groups say mow your lawn less, let it grow, because that has benefits for biodiversity and wildlife, which has a knock-on impact potentially in improving our chances against climate change. Green spaces don't just have to extend to gardens either. Green roofs, the covering of a roof with plants and greenery, while an expensive change, can help to reduce rainwater runoff and can help with cooling during hotter weather too. In fact, studies show that a 20% increase in green roofs can halve the urban heat island effect, that is, the excessive temperatures of built-up areas, by 2050. Speaking of the heat, what are some other ways we can keep our homes cool? A cheap method to fight overheating is to introduce passive cooling measures such as solar shading. This can be as simple as installing curtains, shutters or reflective blinds on windows. We can also beat the heat by reducing the level of glazing used in the home, particularly on south-facing facades, to ensure less heat is trapped indoors during the summer months. Installations such as trickle vents that allow airflow when open but prevent it when closed can also be a good weapon to add to your cooling arsenal, 
and can be a good idea to consider if you're changing the glazing in your home, as this will improve the cost efficiency of the process. But what about air conditioning? Traditional air conditioning, while effective against overheating, can be quite energy intensive and expensive. Excess waste heat is expelled in the environment, which can make overheating worse for others. Adapting our housing not only has an environmental function, but could be a really prudent investment. As these issues become more prevalent, buyers may become more interested in properties already adapted to the new weather, or will factor in the cost to convert and renovate an outdated home when placing an offer. In an ideal world, we would not have to consider these changes, but unfortunately, as climate change marches onwards, these measures are set to become more necessary. It is perhaps only in retrospect we will truly realise that the best solution may have been to have avoided this outcome in the first place.